Fire your boss. Your ticket to freedom. When I was 15 years old, my junior varsity soccer coach shattered my self-esteem with a hammer. At that fragile young age, I did not yet know what I was capable of, so when he told me that I wasn't good enough, I believed him. Like many American kids in the era of the video game, I grew up an inside kid, watching television and playing video games for hours. As a natural athlete, my father did his best to get me out into the world. I played many sports from baseball to soccer to basketball. I dabbled a little bit in everything, but the only sport that stuck was soccer. When I started high school and discovered that sports were mandatory, I chose to play soccer. As nearly the slowest person on the team, I naturally decided to learn to be a goalie. As a freshman, I was the backup goalie. My job revolved around supporting the junior varsity starter. I made sure he was warmed up before games, kept him warm during halftime, when it was cold out, and helped him in any other way he might need. We weren't great friends, but at least he didn't hate me like the first string goalie for the varsity team. One day, a miracle happened. The first string goalie broke his wrist in the middle of the game. I couldn't believe it. I thought, surely, he's going to be fine. There's no way coach would ever put me in. Luckily for me, he had no choice. Despite his utter lack of faith in me, he put me in, I saved the game, and we won. Best of all, my dad was there to see my victory. Suddenly, the sun was rising on the nation of Jonathan. The poor injured kid was out for the season, but I couldn't have been more excited. I was sure I would get to be the goalie for the rest of the season and prove myself to the other players and, more importantly, to my father. The next Monday at practice, the junior varsity coach picked the tallest guy and said, You're the new goalie. I was devastated. I had been training the whole season. Why wouldn't he put me in the game? He said to me something I'll never forget. Doug's taller than you. He'll be a better goalie. This wasn't the first and certainly not the last time I encountered such a simplistic mindset. I have a feeling that you've encountered the same kinds of things in your life, where there was someone out there who wouldn't give you a shot. This was just the beginning of my soccer odyssey. I'll share the story of the rest of that season with you before we finish this book. But for now, it's time to talk about you. There's a very good chance that, if you were just given the right opportunities, if someone would just give you a shot, you could do something amazing. Unfortunately, we spend so much of our lives waiting for someone else to give us a shot, waiting for someone else to say, hey, I'm putting you in. That's all I wanted to hear from my coach. Jonathan, get out there. I'm going to give you a shot. You've picked up this book, and you've begun your journey with me. This is your shot. Until now, maybe no one else has seen your potential, but I do. I know what it's like to have no one in your corner. It's time to stop waiting for someone else to give you a shot. It's time to start creating your own opportunities. Unlock your superpower. No matter where you are in life, you need a backup plan. Regardless of your career, how much money you have, or how much debt you're in, 
you need a plan B. If there's one thing I learned from my soccer coach shattering my self-esteem, it's that you cannot rely on other people to give you the life you want. We're all born with certain advantages and disadvantages, but it's what we do with those that matter. Being born with more opportunities doesn't always mean your life will be better. When's the last time you heard of someone who was born to a trust fund accomplishing anything significant with their lives? People born into wealth and lives of ease have a lack of need, which means they don't feel the drive to accomplish anything. On the other hand, far too many Americans are waiting for that next raise to get ahead. For any of us, as our salary increases, so does our debt. The average American spends 10% more than they make. Point one, if you're making $1,000 a month, you increase your debt every month by $100. If you're making $10,000 a month, your debt increases by $1,000. That's why so many people go from having amazing houses and beautiful cars to living in studio apartments or worse. We're a nation that doesn't plan for the future, and it's time to change. In this book, we're going to go on a short and powerful journey together, discussing different business models, and ways you can start to build your plan B. Whether you're working, in between jobs, or afraid you're going to lose your job, these are business models that you can start implementing today to create a bulwark between you and the loss of your primary revenue stream. This is the core tenet of my belief system, and everything I teach it serve no master. If you learn one thing from this book, it's that you should always have multiple revenue streams. As soon as you build one business model, you should start on the next one. Many young entrepreneurs find success through luck. The first thing they try works, which is fantastic, but then they quit their old job. They're back to a single revenue stream, and they're back to being vulnerable. As soon as something goes wrong, and there's a hiccup or a shift in the market, they're suddenly back to zero revenue streams. I hope that the first thing you try with me works. However, what I want is for us to build out a plan B, a plan C, and a plan D. Every business model we're going to discuss in this book can work cooperatively with the other models to provide you with multiple revenue streams and inputs into your business. An online business can be broken down into three pieces, traffic, experience, and sales. Someone visits your website for the first time, traffic. They read a blog post or some of your emails, experience. They feel they know you well enough to purchase from you, sales. As we go deeper into this process, this simple three-step business model will allow you to make money even while you sleep, the ultimate superpower. I implore you to go along with me on this journey. Allow me to show you what's possible and how much you can transform your life with just a couple hours a week. You may be wondering, if the information in this book is so useful, why is Jonathan giving it away for free? That's a good question. My primary book, Serve No Master, has been on the top of the business charts since 2016. That book is not free, and it never will be. However, by charging for that book, I realized that I'm leaving a lot of people behind. There are plenty of people who can't afford a $10 book. Whether it's a lack of faith, trust, self-confidence, or funds, 
There's something holding people back from making that first decision and buying my book. I want to be able to reach and help as many people as possible. I want to get my message out there and create opportunities for people who are just starting and who aren't ready to grab a book by an author they've never heard of. I'm not famous. I don't run a Fortune 500 company. I didn't sell my business to a social media platform after 18 months. I'm just an independent author who lives on a tropical island. I made my dreams come true, and I want to teach you how to do the same. There are two ways that you can influence the world. The first is to influence a small number of people significantly. This is what happens when you adopt a child. You spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with them, and you transform their life. When you do one-on-one -on -one coaching or mentoring, it takes a considerable amount of your time, but the impact is significant. At the other end of the influence spectrum, you reach a significant number of people, but affect them only a small amount. This is the type of impact a motivational speaker has. They give a speech to a room full of people, teaching them how to improve their self-esteem and take on the world. They may not work with each audience member one-on-one, -on -one, but they certainly give a lot of people the self-confidence they need to move on to the next step and achieve something great. I've impacted many people by working with them one-on-one, -on -one, but I want to broaden my reach and connect with more people. That's why I've created a book that's available to everyone. I want to increase my influence. If, at the end of this book, the only thing you've learned is that it's possible to improve your life, then my mission is accomplished. It doesn't matter if you choose to follow me after this book, or if you find someone else that better fits your skill set and the goals you want to accomplish. I have already affected you enough to give you the hope to get to that next step. Building Runway If you're like the majority of the people who read my books, you already have a full-time job that takes up so much of your day that you have very little time left to invest in building your own business. You certainly can't dedicate huge amounts of time to a business that won't show returns for 6 to 12 months. That's why we start by focusing on building runway, which is where you generate revenue fast. There are two ways to make money with an online business. The first is by selling your time, the second is by generating passive income. Most of us approach life only using the first method. We trade our time for money. We spend our time in an office, and we get paid for it. Whether you work for someone else or for yourself, this is the first phase of your entrepreneurial journey. This is how I started, and it's how everyone starts. Selling time is the best way to build runway. Whenever I want to fund a new project, I sell some time. When I want to put out a new product, but I don't quite have enough funds to do it, I spend some time ghostwriting for someone else, and they give me the funds I need to begin creating my product. It's critical to understand how this process works. Making enough money to quit your job is not the end of this journey, it's merely the end of phase one. When the first revenue stream you build is strong enough to allow you to leave your job, you have more control over your schedule, but you still have a single point of failure. 
My journey began when I lost my job teaching at one of the best universities in the United States. I was fired in dramatic fashion, which I recount in great detail in Serve No Master. After losing that job, I realized I never wanted to go back under someone else's power. I never wanted to be in a position where someone else could fire me ever again. I had an incredibly limited savings account and built my runway in the worst way possible, using a credit card. I started out by selling local services to small businesses, helping them enter the 21st century. I improved their websites, got them traffic, and helped them turn their websites into actual profit-generating tools. This required me to meet with my clients face to face. I would drive all over town from coffee shop to coffee shop, from Panera to Starbucks. How many paninis and hot chocolates could I choke down in a single day? It felt like I was on an odyssey to find out the answer to that question. When I finally had enough revenue, that I was no longer afraid of losing my home and going hungry, I began to move into phase two, the passive income stream where I make money while I sleep. There's nothing I love more than waking up to emails alerting me that sales have come in. I have enough books on Amazon and enough products out in the world that I will always generate revenue while I sleep. This is exactly what I want for you. The first step in this process is to work together to build your runway. Once that's established, we're going to develop passive income streams. If you're working nine to five for someone else right now, that's a very long day. It's hard to come home after all those hours and put in another eight hour shift on your new business. I know what that's like. I have three kids who need a lot of attention. We're going to work on eliminating that day job. We're going to generate enough revenue selling your time for more than you're currently getting paid to allow you to fire your boss and leave that job behind. Whatever your boss is paying you right now is less than your worth. If your boss is paying you $10 an hour, I guarantee you you're worth more. Companies would go out of business if they paid employees what they are worth. By having a plan B in place, you're not going to be financially devastated if your other revenue streams disappear. Building Runway prepares you to build passive revenue streams and protects you if the worst should happen and you lost your job for reasons outside your control. Let's go on this journey together. Let's start building Runway and begin establishing passive revenue streams so that you have a financial legacy. Breaking the Money to Time Link Right now, you're stuck in phase zero. This is where you work for someone else, get paid a fixed amount of money for each hour or week you work, and have no control over your destiny. It's time to launch into phase one. As we start building your runway, you will soon realize that your time is worth far more than you ever thought. Despite the feeling of freedom that comes with phase one, the process is not complete until you break the chain that ties you to time. Whether you're a consultant, selling your services, or working on any of the business models I'll be sharing with you later in this book, you're still tying money to time. Once your runway is built, however, it's time to take flight and enter the second phase of your career, the passive revenue stream. This is where you make money for the same work multiple times. 
Even when I was performing services for other businesses, I always approached a project with the goal of making money three times on that single service. I would first use the money from one client to buy software and training that I needed to service them. Then, I would use that software and training to service other clients and generate a second stream of revenue from that first investment. To produce the third revenue stream, I would use that training or those tools on my own business. If you approach every online business opportunity with the goal of getting paid three times, you will increase your efficiency and you'll cut the time to money connection faster. The faster you cut that connection, the sooner you'll be free. Let me paint you a picture of what freedom looks like. I dictated this book on a beach that's only 30 minutes away from my house. I have a beach in my front yard, but it's not quiet enough to dictate. I walked along the beach in about an inch of water under some palm trees in the middle of paradise, while my wife and son played about 20 yards away from me. Freedom isn't so bad. What's even more amazing is that I only have to dictate this book once, and I can give it away an infinite amount of times. I'm never going to charge money for this particular book, but every other book that I do charge for follows the same process. I write it once, and I sell it tens of thousands of times. I see the internet as the great equalizer. It doesn't matter where you're from or what your situation is. The playing field is even thanks to the internet. Anyone can learn how to build a business online with minimal investment. As you're approaching this process, I want you to focus on getting to phase two. Some people get stuck in phase one and they are very successful, but they're trapped. An example of a phase one business is a family that opens a corner convenience shop and works 12 hours a day, seven days a week. There's always a member of their family behind the counter. They can generate huge amounts of money, but they're always there. During phase one, it's easy to paint yourself into a corner. You can build a business that's pure service and requires your continual time. Before you realize it, you're stuck. When I founded Serve No Master, my idea was to build a business around something other than my personality. A business built around Jonathan Green as a brand is unsellable. It's not like the Dread Pirate Roberts from The Princess Bride. I can't retire so someone else can be the next Jonathan Green. That's why I built a business called Serve No Master. I wanted it to have a name that was separate from my personal identity. Unfortunately, despite my best efforts, my face, my voice, and my words are everywhere. Despite our best efforts, we can end up tied to our businesses. It can be hard to break through to phase two. I haven't broken through to phase three, which is where you sell your business and retire. That's not on my roadmap. When you want to do that, you're going to need to read a different book. Maybe even a book I write in 10 years when I do sell a business. Keep phase two in your sights. Keep the hope alive that you will be able to make or do something once and sell it multiple times. That is when you've broken the bond between time and income. Play to win. I've never written a free mass market book before because people take action based on their investments. Because this book is free, many people will download it, 
few will start to read it, even less will finish it, and only a small number will take action. You're far more likely to put your back into a course that cost you $10,000 than a book that you found for free in your friend's garage. When I was 27, my roommate was so bad at relationships that someone gave him a book on how to be better at dating. Because it was free, he never read it, and he never got better at dating. However, I saw the book on his bedstand and decided to borrow it. I read it in a single day, transformed my approach to dating, and now I'm married with three kids. There will always be people who will take something for free, but take no action. Luckily, our world is also filled with autodidacts who will grab any sort of knowledge they can get their hands on, teach themselves all that they can, and put their knowledge to good use. I want you to be one of those people. It's easy to approach making money online like the lottery or a game. I'm fascinated by the way online gambling works. As much as there are loads of casinos where you can gamble with real money, I'm also targeted with advertising all the time for pretend casinos where you play with pretend money. I'm sure there's a reason why they do this. They probably get you in the free casino and talk you into the paid casino because they convince you that you're going to be a winner. It is very dangerous to mingle real money with imaginary money. And it is easy for us to mingle real money with pretend money online. We can play with pretend money and think that we'll then win real money. In the same way, if you think of what I'm teaching you as a game, you remove the risk of feeling bad if you fail. But you also remove the possibility of success. One of the first steps I teach in every single one of my books is to start a new budget. Everything you spend comes from your business budget. If you buy a book about space marines, which is my favorite type of book, you don't expect a return on that investment. If you spend three bucks, you don't expect to earn the three dollar back. However, if you buy a business book with the same three dollars, it should teach you enough to earn the money back. Earlier this year, I hired a consultant to help me with my numbers. He went through my business, helped me analyze things, and showed me where there were holes in my business. I made back triple what he cost within three days. I saw his bill as an investment. I didn't pay him to be my buddy, I paid him to help me improve my business. He's the first consultant ever to give me advice that worked. He gave me five steps, I took his advice, and I made more money. If you want to be successful and make it to phase two, you've got to get serious. You have to decide that you're going to play to win. If you just put your toe in the water, you'll never learn how to swim. You have to make the conscious choice to change your life. I had been a dabbling entrepreneur for more than a decade when I got fired. I'd started businesses before, but I never really believed in them, even though they were profitable. Only when I lost my job did I realize that I had to make it as an entrepreneur. That's when it dawned on me. My entire life, I'd always had a toe in the water. But success would never come until I took a breath and jumped in. You have to be proactive and start acting like a business. Whether you get a tax ID or set up a separate business account, there are specific steps you should take to show the world you're serious about this. 
Plant your flag on the moon and say, I'm here, this is real, and this is my business. Make a decision that you're here to win, you're serious about changing your life, you want to accomplish great things, and you want what this book teaches to work. This book was not created to make you feel good. If I can generate hope in you, that's awesome because hope leads to action. Hope is the first step. Hope means that you believe that there is a possibility that this will work. Control your spend. It's time to take action and start a new budget. Everything you spend from now on comes from your business budget, and everything you spend from your business budget needs to be written down. You have one resource that's more valuable than money, and that's time. Since this book was free, let's look at it as a time investment. Right now, you make a certain amount of money for every hour you work. Write down that number. Then, write down the number of hours it takes you to read this book. Multiply those numbers together, and that's how much of your time you invested in this book. You don't have to be high-tech with your budgeting. There are some phenomenal apps, programs, software, and tools that will help you to track your ins and outs. Most of them cost money, so you may want to start with just a notebook. My wife runs our hostel using a notebook to track the money coming in and going out. We have software that handles reservations, but she prefers to track money in a book. You can be as low-tech as you want, as long as you're tracking the right numbers. The important thing is to see your time as valuable, and your money, as an investment, rather than an expense. You didn't buy a business book, you invested in one. By spending $10 on a business book, you should expect to get back that $10, and even more. This is how you're going to approach every dollar and every hour you invest in your new business from now on. By changing the way you talk about spending money, you will change your expectations. It's time to get to the meat of this book. I'm going to walk you through 16 powerful and effective business models, many of which I use in my own business, that you can use to generate fast revenue, build runway, and develop passive income streams. This is by no means an exhaustive list. These 16 business models are designed to give you enough ideas to find one you connect with, but not so many that you feel overwhelmed. I've seen other books that offer hundreds of ideas for business models. I prefer depth over breadth. I want to make sure you have a feel for each of these business models and see how you can use them to get started right away. Take a look through these business models. Take your time trying to understand them and decide which ones could be the best fit for you. Blogging Blogging is how I first spread my wings on the internet. I wrote my first blog post way back in 2007. More than a decade later, I still love blogging. It's like writing a diary entry that people like to read, comment on, and talk about. Blogging is great because there are tons of people out there who would love to pay you to blog for them. I've seen services that provide three to five blog posts a month to startups and businesses. Some of those services charge thousands of dollars a month. When you find your first client, you can charge them enough money to cover the cost of a killer blogging course. 
Once you learn the process and skills needed to be a great blogger, you can get more clients and charge more money. When I think of the internet, I think of Cookie Monster from Sesame Street. He has a voracious appetite and is constantly eating cookies. But because he has no throat, every cookie he eats gets smashed in his mouth and bounces out, which means he only gets hungrier. He's like the Sisyphus of cookies, always pushing that cookie up the hill, only to have it fall right back down again. The internet is voracious in its desire for new content. Every day, readers are looking for what's new. We don't care about what happened last week or even yesterday. We want to know what's happening now. This constant need for new content means there is a growing need for people to write blog posts. While you're working for someone else and improving your blogging skills, you can begin to write posts for yourself. You start building out your own catalog. Eventually, you can create your own blog. For less than fifty dollars, you can have a blog set up that will allow you to write posts for a year. As your following grows, eventually, you no longer need to sell your time. Enough people are visiting your blog that you can now invest all your time in that passive revenue stream. The best thing about blogging is that when someone finds your blog and likes what they see, they're going to read your entire back catalog. When you start, you might feel like no one is reading your posts, but just wait. Soon. Thousands of people are going to read everything you've ever written. This is how people engage in my content, and it's how I engage in content that I enjoy. YouTube. You don't have to be eloquent, fancy, or beautiful to be successful with videos. The biggest area for success on YouTube is actually videos for children. Children will watch the same videos for hours. My children love watching unboxing videos, which is basically just an advertisement for a toy. A little kid will open up toys and candy that they probably got for free, record the experience, and get paid to upload the video. My kids like watching those videos so much that even when they own that toy. They would rather watch the video than play with the actual toy. Most people make the mistake of thinking you have to be an expert in video marketing to succeed. In reality, the videos with the most views are the ones for beginners. Beginners need the most training, and they watch the most videos. A beginner video can get 100,000 views, whereas an advanced video might only get a few hundreds. When I first started out way back in 2010, I thought I had to buy all the best tools. I bought a special video camera, a special microphone, a fancy tripod, expensive lighting, and even a background screen to set up behind me. I have an entire multi-camera setup with all the bells and whistles, but I don't use any of it. I do almost all of my work using a four-year-old iPhone. The only equipment I have in addition to my iPhone is a gimbal, which is a little holder that keeps the camera steady when I'm walking on the beach, and a lavalier microphone that I plug into the phone and clip to my shirt. It used to cost thousands of dollars to buy a studio, but now you probably have all the equipment you need in your pocket without even realizing it. Video marketing is a great chance to use your creativity, and this is an area of marketing that loads of businesses need help with. 
Most local businesses couldn't record a captivating video to save their lives. A while back, there was a hotel in my hometown whose online presence was atrocious. They were paying a very expensive company to handle their online marketing. Yet, if you clicked on the link to their website, it took you to a motel chain's website rather than their hotel's website. I decided to send them a proposal, offering to help them improve their online presence. I wrote an extensive 17-page list of all the things that I would do to help that business grow. Unfortunately, the woman who received my list was the one who had hired the marketing company that was ripping her off. Rather than admit that she had made a mistake, she sent back a very mean email, then proceeded to have the company she'd already hired implement my entire list. She didn't want to admit what she had done wrong, so she continued to pay five, or even ten times more than what I would have charged. The funniest part of the story is that the website is still terrible, even after they stole all of my ideas. Their content is still boring, and they generate customers the exact same way hotels did in the 1980s. They don't do anything dynamic or creative. I had an entire idea for a video marketing campaign that would have made them viral and would have doubled, tripled, or even quadrupled their business. I wrote a script about a hilarious murder mystery series that would take place in this hotel. It would be the type of advertising that no one else does, and it would have drawn attention. This is what you can do. If you keep your videos fun and creative, you will smash all the other boring companies out of the market. Just like with blogging, you can create videos for clients and generate enough revenue while you're building your own channel. Instagram This book isn't going to cover every social media platform but we are going to use Instagram as an example of how you can leverage social media to generate revenue. Instagram is the most straightforward concept in the world. You take pictures, write a description, and other people can look at them. It's basically a way to show off. When I first encountered Instagram, I thought I would take pictures of my kids, let my family follow me, and share the images without them being too public. Of course, that's not how anyone else uses the platform, and it shows just how much of a dad I've become. The best way to use Instagram is to take pictures of yourself, use the filters to improve the photo, and get people to follow you. If you get enough followers, a big brand might approach you and offer you $5,000 to $100,000 to take a picture of you holding their product. Instagram is a business, not a game. It's a service you can provide for someone else while you build your own channel. Most Instagram celebrities have someone else take their pictures using a camera that costs thousands of dollars. They then tweak the photo in Photoshop for hours until they look flawless. When they upload their picture, they strategically add tags to make sure it gets the maximum reach. It's smoke and mirrors. That person did not get out of bed looking that beautiful, take a picture in the mirror before they hopped in the shower and throw it online. They approach their Instagram account like a business, which they absolutely should. As I've said before, we want to approach everything as a business model. They also call constantly. Any photo that underperforms gets removed. If your average photo gets 2,000 likes, 
but one photo only has 500 likes, delete it. It's hurting your average. This is why many of the most popular and successful channels only have 100 photos. It's not because they have only ever uploaded 100 photos. It's because they're continually pruning, tweaking, and improving their Instagram account. They see it as a business, and so should you. As you start out, it's okay to take your own pictures with whatever camera you have. Along the way, you can learn the art of photography. You can master the lighting and angles until you become amazing at taking and editing photos. As you learn, you can begin building your own channel. There are loads of businesses with underdeveloped Instagram channels. My own business has a very weak Instagram account. I only have so much time every day, and Instagram just seems to fall to the bottom of the list. Over the past few years, I have hired three different women to run my Instagram channel, and each of them failed. I live on a tropical island. Right now, I'm standing in four inches of water. All I can see in front of me is two young boys paddling away in their canoe. Otherwise, it's paradise. Everywhere you look, the view is majestic. It would be nearly impossible for me to take a bad photo. For my Instagram channel, I would take photos, send them to the girl, and ask her to upload them, and add the hashtags. Each time, the person I hired put the images in the wrong size, or the wrong shape, and there were countless spelling mistakes. It was amateur hour. Even the people who are succeeding with other business models have opportunities where you can approach them and offer to help them in whatever area they're lacking. Along the way, you could build your own business in parallel. I'm not saying this so that every person who reads this book emails me and offers to run my Instagram account. I'm merely pointing out that there are loads of people that you can approach who already have massive followings. Local businesses all need your help, and you can do something amazing for them. Author I write books for a living. Back when I wanted to build new businesses and generate revenue fast, I sold my time by ghostwriting for other people. Once I had enough revenue to sustain my business, I transitioned into passive income by writing books under my own name. I first started using this model when I came to my paradise island. About five years ago, my wife and I came to this island on vacation for a month, and I immediately fell in love with it. At the time, the power or the internet would go out for two or five days at a time. I realized I couldn't have an active internet business here. If I had a business where I had to be online every day, I'd be tearing my hair out every time the power cut out. I wanted to switch to a heavily passive income stream, and that's when I transitioned to writing full-time. I can write books when the power is out, and when the internet is turned off. I only need the internet long enough to upload a book and send it to the client, the publisher, or whichever store is selling it. The author model ties directly into so many other skills. Whether you're writing a blog post or a book, writing is writing. The better you get at writing, the more you can use it in other areas of your life. When you're writing books for clients, you can try different methods and styles to get a feel for what people like and what they don't. Clients tend to give you fast feedback, 
So you'll know almost immediately if something didn't work. When I work with a client on ghostwriting, I always explain my system. I create the overall structure, I get their approval, and then I add in the quotes, case studies, and personal stories. Of course, there are always some clients that don't listen. When I send them the rough draft, they always ask, why didn't you add this in? It can get frustrating working with clients who never listen to you, but it's very informative to listen to their complaints. When they're consistent, that tells you that every final book needs to have that element. They all want it, and there must be a reason why. By writing books for other people in different markets, I become a better writer I develop a better understanding of how to communicate with my audience and I'm better able to train the writers who go through my programs so that they can accelerate faster. Readers are always looking for more books. I read a book every day. Every month, I hop onto my Kindle, go to the science fiction section, and search for every single book on Kindle Unlimited released in the last 30 days. I read just about every single book with a review. As long one other person has read it, I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm a consumer as well as a creator. There are ways to accelerate the author business model that can disconnect you from time faster. One of those ways is dictation. Instead of typing out your book, you just speak it into a recorder, get it transcribed, clean it up, and send it off to your client. A year and a half ago, I thought I was going blind. It was devastating. I switched to dictation so that I could continue to work and support my family even if I lost my vision. Luckily, after going through a series of experiments and working through some processes of my own, I was able to reverse most of the problem. While the sword of Damocles still hangs over me, my eye problems seem to currently be in remission. I'm constrained by how much time I can spend on a computer, but I can still dictate. That allows me to walk along the beach while I write my books, rather than sitting in a cave, typing away on a computer like I used to do. The author business model is my favorite. It's where you can let your creativity fly, and it's where you have the most control of your destiny. There's an entire literary ecosystem where you can find a following and continue to put more books in front of them. Rather than having to go out into the wilds of the Internet to hunt down fans, readers, and customers, you can build an entire business within that ecosystem. Product Creator a product creator is not quite the same thing as an author, but it's pretty similar. Products are what we sell in the direct response market, or directly from a website that seeks to solve a specific problem, and this is where I started before I switched into being an author. As a product creator, you can help people, and you can generate revenue fast. Selling a book for $2.99 on Amazon is great, but it's not a lot of money. When you create a product, you can sell the same information for $47, and people will eat it up. The only difference between a book and a product is the formatting. With a product, you can add images and make it look dynamic. When you become a master product creator, you create videos and audio to go along with your books. The majority of the content I sell directly from my website is in the form of video training. I 
upload recordings of past training or new videos that I've recorded, and I add visuals to help my viewers follow along. My process is very simple. I make slideshows using Keynote on my Mac, and I add in cool images and transitions. I record videos where I talk about the same things I talk about in my books, I record that slideshow, and I end up with an awesome video. Clients and customers are willing to pay four to five times more money for the exact same content in video format than they are in book format. I used to have clients pay me to write books that they would sell in direct response. When I noticed that they would also pay someone else to take my book and turn it into a video, I realized that I was losing money by not knowing how to create videos. So I took a few courses and taught myself to become a full spectrum product creator. These business models can all weave into each other. If you've already started working with video as part of your YouTube business model, combine that with the authorship business model, and you'll become a product creator. There are plenty of marketers out there who are desperate for more products to sell to their audience. I'm constantly trying to create more products, and more training to meet the needs of my following. I'm a big believer in depth of catalog. Other people create one thing that works, and they ride that horse until it dies. They can make a lot of money, but it doesn't last forever. I'm much more of a believer of creating lots of useful things that work, so that I constantly have an audience I can pivot toward. As a product creator, you'll start off by getting paid a flat fee. Once you get better, you can start to ask for a percentage of profits. Then, you'll start having a passive revenue stream, getting paid even after your work is finished. I wrote a book a few years ago that took me 35 hours of work. I asked for a percentage. Now, I get a direct deposit every single month for my royalties. I make far more money from the royalties than I would have made if they paid me a flat fee up front. It took them a very long time to release that product, and I didn't make the first dollar for more than a year after I finished writing, but it still sells nearly every single day. Voiceover Artist most of us know how to talk, and that's the only skill you need to get into this industry. The fastest growing segment of the book market is audiobooks. Even though I dictate all of my books, the audio version of this book is not my voice. I don't have the patience or access to silence that I would need to record my own audiobooks. I have plenty of clients who don't have an audio version of their books. They are leaving money on the table and ignoring the need of people who prefer that format. When I ask them why they don't meet that need, they always say that they want to record it themselves, but they're just waiting for the right time. Let me tell you a secret, if you're waiting for the right time, it's never going to come. Despite the fact that I have a podcast and dictate all of my books, creating an audio book is outside of my skill set. In the background of all my recordings, there's the rustling of palm trees, the roar of the motorcycles, and the splashing of waves. All of those background noises would drive people crazy when listening to an audiobook. In fact, the audiobook checkers would never let it through. Fortunately, 
A dictation recording doesn't have to sound perfect, and my following is kind enough to enjoy the tropical background noises in my podcast episodes. You can make a lot of money in the voiceover industry, and you don't need a lot of equipment. You can use your first paycheck to buy a better microphone and some soundproofing for your home studio. As you get more jobs, you can raise your prices to fund better equipment. My friend Adam is a very successful voiceover artist who mostly focuses on business recordings. He charges more than 60 times what beginning voiceover artists get paid, and that's the bottom of his fee structure. There's no ceiling on this industry because the need for audio content is growing. It's outpacing the demand for other types of content, and I believe there will be even more opportunities in this market moving forward. We live busy lives. Whether you're driving to work, riding the subway, or traveling on a plane, many of us want to listen to content instead of reading it. Sometimes we want to give our eyes a break. As you continue to work for clients, you'll improve your skills and be able to buy better equipment. You can then harness your newly honed abilities and do the voiceovers for your own book, start your own podcast, or create your own course to teach other people how to be voiceover artists. Every single one of my books has an audio version. Instead of paying a flat fee, I prefer to share the royalties of all my audiobooks with the people who created them. This is an excellent opportunity for them to build passive revenue streams. The English guy who did the voice recording for Serve No Master is feeling pretty good about that. While I'm continually working, buying traffic, and getting more people to learn about my brand, his work is finished. He did his job, and it's a win for both of us. Podcaster. I don't consume very many audiobooks. Many of my followers love them, but whenever I try to listen to a book, I fall asleep. It doesn't matter how many spies or robots are running around. Podcasts, on the other hand, are my favorite way to engage entertainment. I could listen to podcasts all day long. When I find a new show I like, I listen to the entire back catalog, whether it's dozens or even hundreds of episodes. There are so many ways to enter the world of podcasting as a business, the most obvious being the presenter and voice of the show. However, there are plenty of behind the scenes roles you can take on. You could be a producer or an editor. You could book guests for the show, including celebrities or experts. You could write the script. You could record the intro, outro, and commercials. You could control the audio levels. You could control the technology and upload the finished product. There are so many elements that go into creating a good podcast. Once you find your role in a podcast, there's a simple format to go from zero to a big show. Interview the biggest guests. One of my good friends gets 2.5 million downloads every single month for his podcast. When he first started, he was interviewing his friends who had followings in the hundreds. Now he only interviews people who have followings in the millions. He has been on my show, but there's no way I could ever be on his again. If you have 100 fans, it's enough to start getting guests on your podcast. Message the people you're interested in working with and tell them why you want to interview them, 
and how it will benefit them. Whenever I want someone to cooperate with me on a project, I say, I want to share your message to my audience. That's something everyone wants to hear. When you're first starting out, interview someone with a following of around 100 people. When they appear on your show, they'll tell their fans about it, and those excited fans will start to be a part of your audience. While you're working on other people's shows to generate revenue, you can build your own show at the exact same time. When you buy new equipment or learn a new skill, those tools and training can be used on your own projects. Podcasting is the easiest way to generate content, and it's my favorite part of my business. I don't get to record podcasts nearly as much as I'd like to because I spend so much time creating other content for my following, but I've already outlined 52 episodes that I want to record next year. You can get into this business model without having to buy new things. I have a very expensive podcasting setup with a fancy microphone, a thick XLR cable, and an impressive audio recorder. I don't use any of it. The same microphone and phone that I use to record my videos and dictate my books are what I use to record my podcast, and you can do the same. All you need is a recording device and your voice. The more you practice recording your voice, the better you'll get at it. My recordings now are far better than they were five years ago. Getting better at podcasting helped me to get better at dictating, and it can help you get better as a voiceover artist. Podcasting perfectly dovetails with many of the other projects I've already talked about. If you're recording videos on YouTube or working as a voiceover artist, you're already using your voice. While each of these business models is enough to stand on their own, they can easily tie into any of the other business models. You can choose two or three that all help to strengthen each other. That way, even if one of those business models falls away, you can still lean heavily into another model and continue to generate a passive revenue stream. Copywriting Copywriting is, hands down, the fastest way to get rich online and it is the most valuable skill that you can develop in isolation to ensure your financial future. Copywriting is simply the ability to write something that motivates the reader or the listener to take action. A great example of this is writing an ad that appears in a magazine. When someone sees that ad, they buy that car or watch. Copywriting is a universal skill. If the internet ever collapses, copywriting will continue to exist. To master the art of copywriting, a great exercise is to look at old ads. I have a ton of ads from the early 1900s and the late 1800s that I can share with you through my website. There are some fantastic ads from around 1901 that are so powerful, you can copy them almost word for word, and they'll still work today. I don't like to copy modern ads for a couple of reasons. First, they're still in copyright. If you take something from someone else's sales letter or commercial, it is stealing. Anything written after about 1940 is in the danger zone. The copyright law is constantly getting pushed back for one reason, and that reason is Mickey Mouse. 
Disney is making sure that that little mouse never falls out of copyright. If he did, anyone could make a Mickey Mouse movie, just like anyone today can make a Sherlock Holmes movie. I like older ads also because of how hard it used to be to get a product. To buy this book, you went to a website, you clicked a button, and you entered your email address. The book was delivered directly to your e-device or by email. It used to be much more complicated. Back in 1910, you would write a book on how to make someone sound smarter to impress the people around them. Then, you would have to put ads in a magazine or newspaper with headlines like, Tired of sounding like a dummy. Want to sound smarter? Want people to think you're educated? Want to impress future employers? If your ad was well designed, people would begin the process of buying your book. They would cut out your ad, check a box on it, and fill out all the information with their home address. They would then go to the bank to get a cashier's check. For those of you who don't know what a cashier's check is, let me explain. You would give the bank a certain amount of money, and the cashier would create a piece of paper that was worth that specific amount of money. That piece of paper could only be cashed by the person you sent it to. The check was guaranteed by the bank, not you. After they received the check, they would go to the post office, buy an envelope, put the stamps on it, and put everything inside that envelope. If the book needed a self-addressed, stamped envelope, they would even have to buy two envelopes and two sets of stamps. They would mail everything to you, and six to eight weeks later, their new book on how to talk smarter would arrive. Nobody on earth would go through that process now. To buy a book today only takes seconds to go through a process that used to take an entire day. When I look at these older ads, I know they're powerful because they got people to do a lot more. This book is free and takes only a few seconds to be delivered directly to you, and I still have to fight to get people to download and read it. Yet copywriters a century ago were able to get people to leave their homes and do all that work just to buy a book from them. The beauty of copywriting is that you get paid in accordance with your ability. There are loads of small jobs that pay $100 or $200 that you can take when you're just getting started. Once you hone your skills and master the art of copywriting, you can take jobs that pay tens of thousands of dollars. To become a great copywriter, you should take a small course. I offer a free beginner's course on my website that can give you tons of amazing resources. There are over 600 old ads in my ultimate swipe file. Copy each of them down by hand into a notebook, making sure to read and engage in each of them. This will allow you to grasp the idea of a good ad. Once you get a feel for the structure, you can start taking low-ticket jobs. As with the other business models, you can use the money